Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to the Traverse of the Stars podcast. How are my loyal listeners? Thank you for your continued support. As always, hit that subscribe button, everybody. We have an amazing show for you all, because Born the Mothership is Kurt Farquhar. You know him as the composer for Black Lightning and the King of Queens. He now scores First Kill on Netflix. Now come join me as we go Traversing the Stars. Hello, Mr. Farquhar. Thank you so much for coming to the First of the Stars podcast. Hi. Nice to, nice to see you. Definitely a pleasure to talk with you, sir. Pleasure being here. So I always start off with a question of inspiration. So what inspired your love for music and who were your earliest influences? Wow. Uh, I, I, what inspired my love for music? I don't remember a time when I didn't love music. I didn't. I started hearing sounds and melodies in my head when I remember it's back as far as three years old. Oh, wow. Uh, humming things, old melodies over and over again. And I've never been able to stop it completely. I can tamp it down, but I can't stop it ever. Mm. It just, it's constantly going on in my head 20 years. Uh, uh, I mean, 24 hours, uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, inspirations. Uh, I love Claude Debussy. I love uh, uh, Miles Davis and Keith Jarrett. Uh, are are really really big inspirations for me and uh yeah i just i love uh so many artists that just do uh do them and just do special stuff you know where they're not just uh totally relegated to the uh, uh the norms of what uh of their times like uh, charles ives is one of my all-time favorite composers because he didn't he didn't he didn't relegate himself to what was going on in those days. I mean, and therefore this guy, uh, he uh, presupposed the uh, virtually every major uh, innovation in music, except for electronics, you know? I mean, and mm. while being, while, while working as an insurance salesman, so, uh, <laughs> insurance executive. So, I mean, uh, go figure. <laughs> so, so going back to what you said about hearing music in your head, is it just that you have a great memory for music that's played or do tunes and melodies just come to you like that tunes and melodies are going on consistently in my head the original ones oh, wow. uh, i'm a, almost never am humming something the a tune of somebody else's uh that, that every now and then i do and that's a that's a relief actually to me and then uh, but it's constantly some sort of like there's there's a score going on right now in my head. <laughs> Fully realized. <laughs> so, uh, just to go into explore that a little bit. So, when you're hearing the tunes, are they situational? Like, for instance, since you're on Traverse the Stars podcast, is this something tuned towards this, or is this literally, or is it just, um, like, not only generic, but like just various melodies, or are they moment specific for you? It's constant melodies, and it, and uh, it's it isn't. Uh, it, it it isn't in one particular direction unless I'm unless I'm writing and I'm pushing it in that direction. Sometimes I try to tamp it down so it doesn't just make me crazy. My head explode from constantly hearing this. But mm. uh, uh, also there, but but there's just a a constant level of sound and melodies. And sometimes when uh, uh, I remember when I uh, first started dating my wife, she says, "You're just." you're just humming all the time. And a lot of times I'm just like, it's just, uh, I, I, it gets out of my head and I'm just starting to sing it. And uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, so it's really a good thing that I do uh, have the job that I do because uh, I, you know, I don't know what I would do if I was like this and, <laughs> and I wasn't a composer. I mean, could you imagine how painful, I, I think back to a, a, an, an old Star Trek uh, episode back in the sixties where, uh, these aliens um, to drive these people crazy, they would place a melody in their heads and they couldn't stop it and it was just driving them nuts. I said, I, I said, oh my God, I remember when I came in, I said, that's me. I said, I oh, okay, I got it explained now. Well, like, like, thank God you have this job because if you were like a lawyer or something during uh, during court when the other prosecutor or whatever is talking to send their humming along to yeah, their melodies I mean, randomly. <laughs> can you imagine? I mean, you imagine, and that's literally my mom 
wanted us all to play instruments, uh, but we weren't actually supposed to be musicians. We were supposed, uh, she chose her, uh, all of our careers and you're supposed to be a doctor or a <laughs> lawyer. And I was supposed to be an attorney, but- Oh, that, really? That didn't work out. It didn't, didn't work <laughs> out with any of us. <laughs> we all ended up being relatively creative. <laughs> but I mean, your musical education is immense. So once again, I tend to research my, uh, my guests. And so you attended the Berkeley College of Music in Boston the National Conservatory of Music in Versailles, France, Eastern yeah. Illinois University. So how did this accumulation of education make you a better musician? Um, did it affect how you heard music in your head or how you approached it? Uh, what benefits did each um, academic institution have on you as a music composer and musician? Well, first of all, I never studied composition at any one of those schools and, and each of them was, uh, especially Berkeley and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 Versailles uh, Conservatory were, were known for uh, composer. I mean, Claude Debussy went to the Versailles Conservatory. And uh, I studied and studied to learn things, to find out what other people were doing and to find out, you know, because I, because I thought that that's what I was supposed to do. And I spent my, in, uh, I spent my whole in childhood doing that, studying everything that I could learn to, to, to push me forward musically. And I've spent my entire adult life trying to forget it all. <laughs> it's literally, uh, it's, it, you know, it's, it's always the chicken and egg thing. What came first, you know, did, did the music come first or did the music theoricians who come mm -hmm. in tell you what they did? You know, um, uh, if that was, if, if, if the theoricians came first, then there would never be a Charles Ives. There would never be uh, a WC. WC was literally kicked out of the uh, Versailles Conservatory for doing exactly the thing that he won the Prix de Rome the <laughs> very next year. So, you know, there could be a big case for you know, uh, uh, being you, like I said in the very beginning of the interview, being you, I, uh, Miles Davis didn't get to where, uh, to this level of reverence we have for him by being everybody else that was before, you know? Uh, mm. I mean, and I, I, I definitely totally believe in like learning what's coming before you and having a history, but then you have to let it go. Mm. You have to let it go and you have to, uh, Everything that you need is inside you now. It is, it is more a process of letting it out. I believe if used properly, take, uh, the, the, the knowledge that we get in the tech, in the tech that uh, the technology and, 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 and education and everything can be useful in helping you get these things out. Uh, but they're not, I don't find them useful in, in getting you to a place of creativity, a place where, where you're expressing yourself fully and wholly, you know? I mean, that's more of an internal uh, journey. Mm. I mean, I have to learn more about myself. I have to have this acceptance of myself. I have to have, I have to, I have to have, a, a, I have to be a very, uh, a great viewer of what is outside of me and, and what happens in the world. And when you put, and, and you bring that to your great, uh, creative approach in uh, the, the making of music to pictures, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a really, really special thing when you feel like I can be whoever and whatever I want to be on demand. You know, and that's and so much of the time we're we're in our heads. We're in our heads. The most beautiful things that we've ever done didn't come from our heads, they came from our hearts. Mm. We come from our heart and bring it out to you. That's what be, true beauty is, not in the head. Not once once I start thinking, then then you <laughs> then, then then you're gone. You know, it's but that's my it's my small oh, opinion on the thing. I, I agree completely. Um, I, as I, I teach uh, writing, I am an English teacher. And what, what I usually teach, tell my students is, you know, I'm going to teach, give you the template on how to write. Once you get the template, it's your job to learn how to break out of it and do your own thing. But at least yeah. have the foundation yeah. first, but so you know how to break out. 
Yeah, and exactly. that sounds what like what is what is breaking out. I mean, a lot of people uh, uh, untrained are, are thinking that they're doing something new. <laughs> no, brother, that's just a shuffle. <laughs> Not so, <huge> X wing. <laughs> so, so when you're studying like musical history, the composers, I'm sure you 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 studied all the, the great ones. Is yeah. there a major difference between what the music was at, at, at its core? with Mozart and Beethoven to what composing of music is now with TV and movies and things of that nature? I don't think the process uh, uh, is, is all that different, you know? I don't think what we go through uh, to do it, you know, the turning ourselves ups and downs about whether this note or that note, uh, 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 the el element of, uh, you know, like in, in music to pictures, our job essentially, essentially is telling people what to feel. You know, uh, um, that's the that's the basis of it. You know, I mean, like I always explain it to folks like a camera going down a dark hallway is not scary. It's not mm -hmm. scary until we start going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, yeah. you know, now, you know, Pookie's getting ready to get off. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it, that's the basics of it but you know that's what we're that's what we're doing i'll say but these guys were doing it with operas and you know uh, uh all of that and back in the day they were just doing it in a in a live way you know and today we get to do it in so many ways uh with 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 uh with not only movies and tv shows but then there's the, with video games and the and the whole like and there's just all of the just short pieces that people are doing and that are just uh, amazing. I mean, I, I see people do some, put some in, uh, interesting music together on a TikTok. They're just like, <laughs> oh, okay, in a few seconds, that's all right. That's pretty strong. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you ever um, have your music play for, for an orchestra in front of an audience, like at one of the opera houses or wherever like that, and have you performed? We, uh, uh, there was a, a a performance at the Television Academy recent, uh, a couple of years ago when they did the uh, uh, music of various television composers and uh, I was invited to uh, to be a part of that. And it was really, it was a lot of fun. It was great to see the other composers and to hear their music live and, uh, and to see one of the, uh, the uh, pieces of music from a show I was doing, I think called Stitchers, and, uh, which was very, very different and weird sort of score you know i don't mm. know where it came from and uh and it was it was really cool to see it together with a with a live orchestra and uh with amazing los angeles musicians playing playing mm. like it and um yeah it's pretty exciting i was uh, just putting together i'd done a show called uh uh uh, uh black lightning and uh uh just recently uh though black lightning is uh has been uh it's no longer on the air just recently we did um uh put together a live orchestral suite of uh of the music of black lightning and i'm looking to get that performed out uh some in a town near you soon <laughs> very cool very cool it, it actually it was a fantastic show um and also the creator tony Isabella is an awesome guy so it, it was it was yeah. very cool to uh see that come live i i loved i love doing this show it's absolutely fantastic what we got to do with that uh was something that was very unique and different. Uh, the uh, uh, producers, uh, Salim, Salim Akil and Mara Brock Akil were, are just really brilliant in the, how they perceive music to be used in their mm -hmm. various shows. And uh, they really push you to go to another level and the, to look at things differently and, and actually allow you to do it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, um, you can, uh, when, when somebody's looking at a composer's score or something, you always have to uh, think of it also in the what was he asked to do, <laughs> you know, so yeah. when you're saying whether that was whether that was great or oh my God, that was bogus, that was so awful. What was he asked to do? What was mm -hmm. he or she asked to do? What uh, uh, what was the dream? Because we are a cog in the wheel. We are and 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 the last cog almost to come up. <laughs> you know what I mean? We guys are so impressed with what they do and and how the importance of their music. But this, you know, this filmmaker or this uh, uh, television writer may have been putting this whole project together for the last five or ten years, and now you come in with all your musical brilliance, and now okay, it's going to be cool. Now I got it. I got it. I'm going to fix all of this. 
you know, and uh, I, I, I tend to not see it that way. I tend to want to know where they're coming from and what, what would it be if they could, if they heard music in their head all the time since they were three? Mm. You know, uh, what would what would it be? What would it be if they had an absolutely limitless budget? budget you know, uh, and 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 start figuring out and trying to get inside their head about what they were feeling, what they what are they listening to when they when they uh, wrote this? You know, mm. I mean, where 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 does what is where's this character sound come from? You know, I have I'm generally riddling most of my uh, producers and directors with a, t- a ton of questions that they probably weren't <laughs> expecting, but that helps me unlock the, uh, the key to the characters. You know, mm-hmm. I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna know what they know, what they're thinking. And if, and if I'm doing it right, they are gonna feel like, oh my God, it came from my heart. It mm-hmm. came from my soul. I, I was just working on a, a show called First Kill on Netflix and, uh, and uh, 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 the producer, uh, Felicia Henderson, uh, just has a really wide range of musical tastes. And she's very, she's one of the producers that gets deeply involved with the music. And, and it's really, really interesting working with her because she really cares so deeply. I mean, music isn't just, hey, that thing that we slap on afterwards. Mm. It's literally in most of her pieces is, uh, is, is, a, is a character in the show itself. And this score that uh, we came up with was b- vastly different than most things that, uh, that I get to do and that, and that she's had on her shows. And we just wanted to go for something just wildly different. I mean, we were doing t- tons of uh, ideas with, with vocals and, but a lot of times the vocals aren't w- what you thought were were instruments were actually vocals. You know, we were chopping it up. We were processing instruments to make them almost sound like a drum or something else. That there's mm. I, I, one of them. We went so far. I remember the uh, singer came in and I said, "Do you do you like what I did there? Did you see it?" And that she had no idea of what was supposedly her. You know, I said, yeah. uh, "Would you run that by me again?" I said, "No, see, that's you right there." And I took. <laughs> took all the processing off and said, see, that's what you're saying. <laughs> like, oh my God, this is crazy. You know, mm. so it's a really, really interesting process. And, and, the, and one would ask, well, why would you take a, 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 a perfectly good vocal track and make, and make it sound like a synthesizer or make it sound like a, a, a drum or something else? I said, because now I get to experience that person's humanity. They bring their, their soul to this in a very different way. It, it may sound like a synthesizer, but she's not a keyboardist. And she, so she's not going to necessarily phrase it the way, the, the way a keyboardist was. She, mm. If it's a drum, she's not going to phrase the drum the way I'm a drummer. She's not going to phrase it the way I would, you know? Mm. And it, it's just going to be, it's just going to have a little bit more of its own thing you know mm-hmm. and that and that it was kind of just fun <laughs> <laughs> well well i mean your your career has been immense um i i read somewhere that you have scored more primetime shows than any african-american in in history hmm. um what does that mean to you i mean is is there pressure in knowing that new composers then are looking to you for inspiration and is there a responsibility in that to the next generation coming up trying to do what you do you know um this uh, it, it's really interesting uh, and uh, deeply humbling to to hear something like that back. Uh, you know, I mean, I never was never certain for sure that I'd be here, uh, but um, uh, I haven't in the past a lot of times wanted to talk about what it is that I do and where and why. Uh, but I think it's important that uh, young people see that there is that there's a path for you. Hey, I, I was born in the projects on the deep south side of Chicago. You know, there's no reason for me uh, to immediately think that I would be here talking with you now. Mm. Uh, uh, but it happened. 
it happened. And if it can, and, and, and I started seeing the value in that if it could happen for me, then you have to let, you have to start letting the next, the next kid from, from Altgeld Gardens or the next kid that grew up in Cabrini Green or the next kid that came from wherever, you know, mm. that, yeah, you too. You too can do this. This is as valid an option for you as it was for me. And there's no reason why you can't have this. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why you can't have anything that can come to your mind. If you're willing to work and put your, put your soul into your heart and let it fly, mm -hmm. then you can do this too. So but that's just my thought. Well, uh, having come from, like you said, the projects, what was it in you that you felt you had the confidence to do what you do and, and pursue what you pursue? Because once again, that's not an easy path that you chose. I mean, music composer, there's, there's only so many that are, you know, that are out there successfully. Where did your confidence to do it come from? Oh, I, I can't say that I necessarily had a confidence in that. I, I thought I knew that there was something that was there for me. I mean, I was homeless and living on the streets and I still thought there's, there's going to be something for me. I used to run around saying, say, kid with a future, kid with a future. <laughs> you know, I thought you'd be walking. When, you, when you're walk, homeless and you walk in the streets all the time, you almost get hit by cars a lot. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> <all> they, <laughs> you know, that they don't tell you. <laughs> and, and, and I, and, and I, I, I never forget times when I'd almost get hit or something. I always say, kid with a future, kid with a future. And I was like, cause I, I knew that there was something. I didn't know that there was this. I didn't come out here to be a television composer. I didn't watch TV or movies. Uh, uh, but it happened. There was something that I knew was there for me. And I, and, and I believed in me ultimately. I believed that this was just a momentary circumstance. I believed that there was something there and I was working towards it, but there was something in me that I had to fix. Mm. I, it, I started there. I said that there had to be something in me that wasn't clicking, that wasn't working. And that I had to take me out of the equation. And what I mean by that is at the end of the year, when we're trying to add up what, uh, uh, when we're saying the things that, that fell apart for me and uh, this and then we're adding up, well, what worked and what didn't and, and why. And I was never going to be in that equation of why things didn't add it up to not working. Uh, I was going to take me out of the equation, which means that all of the things that I could control, look, I can't control if, 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 if boss man, uh, uh, cousin Pookie has been sleeping on his couch for the last six weeks and, and they just, Dwight tells him, you got to get rid of Pookie, you know, <laughs> well, I've got a job for you, Pookie, you know, and there's nothing I'm going to be able to do about that. There's nothing I'm going to be able to do if somebody needs to, needs to put somebody else in that position or for whatever reasons, this has to go somewhere else. But I'm always going to be the most prepared person you ever saw. I said I was going to be the person that was that was, you know, happy to be there at that job, mm. you know, which matters. Hey, boys and girls, it matters. I said personally sit in a room in a in a dark windowless room for 16 hours a day. It matters who's next to me. Mm. You know, it, it will matter who's going to have to hire you one day. And, you know, so I'm happy to be doing my job. I'm always prepared. I'm on time or early. I'm treating the people right. I said, people ask, like, how do you get so many jobs? What do you, and how do you get so many hits? And this and that? I said, first of all, I only work for Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and they, and is it, what? I, I could have sworn that was John Williams, but you know, I'm, more, I'm walking with you on this one, brother. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I said, well, you know, <clears throat> what, uh, what I mean by that is whenever my, whenever my director, or my head producer walks in the uh, in the room. I see Steven Spielberg, and I act accordingly. I act accordingly. I, none of the crap about you know attitude. None of the, the 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 silliness about me 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 me. Hey, if if Steven Spielberg was standing in front of you right now and telling you, okay, okay, boys and girls, we're gonna be working late tonight. It'll be four in the morning before we're out of here. 
most of us wouldn't even wouldn't even remember to call our significant others to say we're not going to be home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would just be, "Where you need, Steve? What is right. it? Come on, brother, I got it for you." You know, I, the difference is give that to all of your producers. Give that to everybody you work mm. with. That's what I do. I'm starting there. I'm a I'm a I'm a ride this old treating them like Steven Spielberg thing on out and see where it take me. Uh, I think that it I think that it it that the producers and the people that you work for feel it. And they're the ones that have to hire you. They're the ones that have to say, I want to work with him again and again and again because he's committed. He's as committed mm -hmm. as me. He's as serious as me about cracking this code. And it that's what it is. It isn't a given that anything that we do is going to become a success. Mm. Not one. So why, you know, I mean, I, as far as I know, nobody's called me to to uh, uh, to to uh, program a network. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter to anyone what my opinion is about the, sh uh, the, the show that I'm working on, about the movie that I'm working on, about this TV series. I don't know. If I did, my butt would be bronzed and sitting out in front of Sony and go that away. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it doesn't work that way. So many things come in, are involved in whether something succeeds or not, that when you see these people picking up a, a, an Academy Award or an Emmy and they're crying like babies, they mean it. They barely, <laughs> they barely can believe that this thing even got done at all, let alone that it got done in this high of a quality that you decide you want to give this to me. Mm. You know, we don't know. So why don't you put your 110% effort in all the time? Like you would if Steven Spielberg was in front of you. Mm. Come on. You don't know. You don't know when it, at some point or another, somebody worked on a first film with Steven Spielberg's. Right. Or an earlier picture. You didn't know. You did not know that that was going to, that a, that a movie about a car, a car and a truck dueling was going to be that big you can't right. possibly you can't possibly have 110 percent uh, known that that a, a movie about a big obviously plastic shark was going to take over the entire world right right 100 i mean come on to say that you knew that 100 percent that was going to be it you know it's we don't always know we don't yep. always know. So put your efforts in. Bring you all the time. Nobody needs to know about your opinion about it, you know, uh, and, unless you're becoming a writer and critic and or 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 uh, or a network exec, film exec, which neither of which I plan to be in. in <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna ride this old composer thing out and see where it takes. <laughs> so so um my day job, I'm, I'm a, like I said, a high school teacher. I teach a special school for uh, kids in rehab. Um, usually kids are trying to overcome drugs, alcohol addictions, things of that nature. Oh, um, right. oh thank you. Uh, most are uh, from inner city and almost all of them dream of being in the field of music. So if there was one thing that I could give them for advice to get them to where you are, in where you are what would be the one thing I can tell them? Uh, you can tell them this. That there is no one thing. Yeah. There's no one thing. There's no, there's not the one piece of music that you're going to write. That's going to change your life. It tends to be, I did this and it got me there and this got me that. And this one uh, got this person to talk, uh, talk to me or to think about me and so on and so forth. There is no one thing. There isn't the secret. Trust me. My where I came from, everybody was we used to talk about the secret that was going to make us be one of those monsters out at the coast because that's what they were out and from from the uh, from Chicago, Illinois. Everybody in New York was better than you. Everybody in L.A. was better than you. Heck, everybody in New Orleans was better than you. And so, if you was at the coast, you were better than us. Well, you you've got to change that up and know that you are special too. Instead of trying to reach for, 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 for who we are, please, please turn inside and let you out. Mm. Let you out unto the world. 
nobody wants to hire you, uh, uh, the next person to sound like John Williams. You're not trying to, uh, uh, to, 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 to get the, the next Blake Neely. They're not trying to hire somebody that comes and sounds like me. They're trying to get you for you. Mm. And only you, can, only you can tell us who that is. Mm. Be completely and unabashedly you, joyously you, revel in the unis, revel in the in in the in the downside and the upside. It is a journey. This is a journey we're on. I'm still on this journey. I'm still trying to figure it out, brothers mm. and sisters. And you need to take 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 stock of who you are and what you've decided to be on this journey. And just ride it on out. Ride it on out. Go in there and do not give up. Six months before my breakout year where I picked up some like nine t uh, TV series in one season, I was giving up. I walked into my manager at that time and said, I'm done. I can't mm -hmm. take it anymore. I can't take one more uh, uh, rejection. I can't take one more, uh, hey, just wait, wait, wait. Oh, you're really great, but you're really this and it's, it's gonna happen. I, I couldn't take it. I was out of here. I had a mm -hmm. plan. I was moving the, I was gonna move to Vermont. <laughs> Hi, Vermont. I love it there. Uh, uh, I was gone. And six months, six months later, I picked up nine shows at once, new shows nice. at the same time. So uh, hang in there. When it's when it's at its lowest, that is that is the that is the floor you get to stand on to push off from, to see, to, to, to see the skies, to see everything uh, that you've ever dreamed of and then some. Even mm -hmm. I could not have dreamed of all of the, I did 22 different TV series and movies last year. I, this far in my career, I would never have figured that. I would have mm -hmm. never have thought, oh yeah, sure. You know, go out and see what your journey is gonna be. Don't give up. And just and 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 be honest with yourself. The best, the biggest thing that the biggest teacher that you can get is being honest with yourself. Telling you, be. I had a teacher one time, Johnny Lane, who used to. This is a this is a great a great device. He would take take you and one of your other friends that was uh, like if you're a drummer to bring two drummers in there and say, okay, who's the be, uh, who's the best here. And if you went off and just said, oh, well, I kick his butt, I'm not the, the fail, you know? If you were, if you were just, uh, oh, that was just great. He's the, he just does everything. It's just so fantastic. But it, it just, you just effusively just went on and on about him. Uh, fail, you did fail out of that. If, if you sat down and very, very meaningfully said, okay, well, Bubba's hands are stronger than mine. I've been working on it uh, uh, a lot, but if you see what his finger control is like there, it's really remarkable. But he can't touch anything that I'm doing with my feet. And by the way, I've got I've got a really strong ability with independence that I think is better than him. His 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 sight reading is good, but by you know you pick apart every little detail of of what you do, a meaningful conversation of coming from where honesty. Mm -hmm. honesty so if you can be the honest so honest that you can say the things if he felt that if you could say the things that were good about you but also the things that were not good about you and about anybody and anything else then you had the ability to move yourself forward mm -hmm. we get we get hung up in the lie in the fantasy you know uh, the thinking that you're something that you're not and thinking that Thinking that things are something that they're not. Oh, there's, 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 there's all these crooks in 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 entertainment and in Hollywood, and so that that's why you, I I couldn't make it. And you know, it's not a real job. It's not a real job. Well, this, none of these are true. None of these things are true. You, if they were true, you'd have to go to that big green green and white building in Burbank with the with the ears with the mouse ears on top of it and tell all of them to get out because they're not doing a real job. Hmm. You know, and when you were finished that, you should walk across the street to Warner Brothers and tell them to leave too, because they're not doing a real job either. Yeah. If if you 
if you uh, if you treat it like a business, it will treat you in kind, mm. and it treats you in kind by giving you money. <laughs> you know, uh, you can't come into this field and and treat it like a joke, showing up late, showing up with 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 every stupid attitude in the in the world would without without coming to it with some reverence and some and some professionality if you if you do that you're going to get what you're reaping from that mm. but if you say i'm going to take this seriously i'm going to treat this like this is the last thing i may chance i may ever have you may you may tend to get get to reap the benefits of that and and do it with honesty geez sometimes i'm not doing as good as i should be i need to redouble my efforts i have to be wh where am i weak what what's what's the weak part of this school i was the great part that i want to show everybody what's the what's the part that just is barely skated through let's work on that too because mm -hmm. i had to sit there and listen to <clears throat> hours of john williams one time uh going to uh the 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 to uh, uh, Disney and my, with my kids and I had had enough and they said well Dad you just sit here and they sat me right where it was this whole Star Wars thing and I'm just listening over and over and over all this John Williams music and thinking I'm not even in this business I'm not even <laughs> I'm gonna listen to this uh, every minute of greatness you know so mm. we, we want to strive to that that's for sure well. I'm gonna put you in the spot just a little bit and we kind of did this out if it's a no. Um, on September, we do what we call recovery week where we celebrate the students going through their, you know, getting through their recovery. And we have yeah. guest speakers um, once a day to talk to them. If you would love to, um, if you're interested to talk to some students, um, I'm sure they would love to talk to you. So just like giving that, throwing that out there for something to think about. So. Oh, absolutely. I love it. I'm two years in recovery myself. So I'd be, oh, wow. glad, okay. to, I'd be, uh, be glad to talk to any of them. All right, so I think it's either in the second or third week of September that they'll do it. So when I get exact dates, I'll send them over to you. And I think they would yeah. love to um, hear someone because, like I said, they all want to be mu musicians. You listen to them, you know, during the, like, what do you want to be? They're like, I'm going to be a rapper. I'm going to be a musician, whatever. And I'm like, well, it's possible. I mean, you got to work your ass off for it, but it's possible, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It. 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 It is if you can if if you have the the real desire for the work, not just the not just the results. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, do you think that's what really is the difference between someone who's successful, and someone who's not? It's not necessarily pure idea of pure talent. It's work ethic. That's the difference. It's work ethic. Uh, look, uh, uh, one thing that I have noticed is a similar trait in all of the people that I have met that are, are six, very successful in our businesses. When you're when you're debating whether I should or shouldn't do this or or whether they're going to pay me this, or whether they're going to do that, uh, most of the guys like me have already started the gig. We're already knee deep in it. I'm like halfway through the queues, you know. I'm you're you're wondering whether somebody's going to rip you off. You're wondering whether somebody's going to do this. You're wondering whether I can do it. You're wondering all of this, and all of the guys that I and gals that I know that are, have succeeded. When you're thinking about that stuff, they're already working on it. Mm. The uh, 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 which proves the old adage: uh, half of half of half of winning is showing up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna show up and get to work, then and a lot of us have this problem. A lot of us have self doubt. So such a mind numbing self doubt. We don't want to call it that. We don't want to say that we doubt ourselves. Nobody wants to think that they doubt ourselves, but all of us do to some degree mm -hmm. or another. Uh, I know that I do, and it's the choice to overcome those doubts. And you know, if you actually start the job, then some then then somebody has to say you either did it. Or it gives everybody a chance to say that you did it uh, or, or or not. If they if you actually finish a song, then if you know so you ever had the musicians that say, "Oh no, I'm, I'm not finished. It's just a you know, no. It's just a demo of it. No, no, I'll hold it." No, it's finished for right now. So I'm, let's let's critique where it is right now. I'm sorry, you don't. If you never, if you never say it's finished, then I can never. None of my criticisms can really touch you because you say, "Well, it wasn't done." Right, right, right. Finish. Jump in. Jump in before everybody else. Finish something. 
finish it and move on to the next thing and learn something, it's each step along the way. And even if the thing that you learn is to not to do this again, or to not do that, or, oh boy, that didn't work. Or, and, and you learn something from everybody. You, I learned so much from people who are not even musicians because all they're doing is telling you how it made them feel. They don't know anything about the, the flat nines and this, that, and the other, you know, mm-hmm. they don't. They don't care. They don't care what you went through to get it. They listen to a record. They, they don't care about the drama, except for it as, as an interesting story uh, uh, later on in your life. But uh, they do care about how it makes them feel when they're listening to it. Mm. Pretty, much, pretty much the only thing you should care about. So don't get all wrapped up in the minutia of, what, of, of your journey of what went there, you know? Do it. The whole thing is, it's all a part of you. It's all a part of you. you. You're not supposed to want to cut off the, you're not supposed to want to cut off the difficult parts any more than you cut off the, the, the bright sunny days. Mm. All of it is what made you. So if there's a, someone that's in recovery or whatever that went through the difficulties that, that led them to recovery, trust me, yeah, recovery are, are the brighter days, trust me. It's, if the things that led you to there that are the dark days and they're equally as important to mm-hmm. not ever think about this and to not ever care about this is to is is is, is a is a, a direct path right into back into it mm-hmm. you you have to accept you know this is a part of me and that's a part of me and i have to give this a break <laughs> i have to you know yeah so i mean a lot of once again uh, um I guess the important question is, um, from a point of view of music, um, yeah. how far do you stretch your interest? Like, do you listen to music that you don't like, but it's a different style than yours? Like, do you listen to um, music that is co- not only classical, but maybe country, rap, rock? You go through uh, all of it to pick something out from it. Well, uh, uh, those who know me know that I, I love country and Western music, which is, that's my favorite music, oddly enough. And I, I find something interesting in all musics, you know, uh, everything from country and wrestling to rap to, you know, rock and roll to whatever. I, I, I've never seen a musician, a, a musician that was special that I thought, oh, well, that's bogus and that has no validity. I said, mm. yeah, it does have validity. People, uh, people are listening to it and caring about it, you know, so let me find out why they care. What what is it that's cool in this? If you if you leave if you leave your judgment at home, you might find what's cool in it. Mm. I, so I try to leave my judgment at home and just listen and just and just become a part of and get, and 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 be part of the movement and get involved, you know, with whatever the music is, you know. And then you start finding out, oh, geez, I'm I'm not I'm sorry, I'm 65 years old and I'm not that old guy that's saying that. You know, oh, turn that crap down. And uh, <laughs> if you if you only knew about it the way we did it in my day, and uh, and why why my day's music was so much better. So yeah, there's a lot of great things about that. But uh, you want me to start picking out all the fa- absolutely fabulous things about today's music, about the craziest rappers, about the most uh, most fringe out there indie rock group. You know, mm-hmm. I'm I'm into all kinds of music, and I and whenever. Whenever I got into a particular style of music, I did. I noticed that I didn't hate the other music uh, uh, that I left behind, and that I did never really totally left it behind. It's already imprinted itself on me. You know, I went through a period when I was t- when I was younger that I was totally into jazz, and I went through a period when I was totally into heavy metal. The, Ozzy Osbourne the, in, in, uh, 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 Ozzy Osbourne and his band. Uh, before when they first came out, you know, when they first came out is what I was listening to. And Led Zeppelin, when they did their first tours of, of the US, I was there at Chicago Amphitheater, you know, and went on to listening to Miles Davis. I, you know, I thought that that was cool. And you 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 just find out what is special. What's spe- special in something that's real? You know, someone had asked me if if they if I thought that uh hip hop was uh was a phase. I said, 
how could something that is coming up, bubbling up from the streets, that is a natural thing that people are doing for no money, mm. going to be a fad? Mm. It, it seems to me more like it was a cultural statement. And here we are all of these years later, and it's arguably the number one music in the world. You know, you, you can't get away from it. There's nothing that hasn't been influenced by it. From the from from the music itself to the to the to the to the look to the way these guys dress has influenced everybody. So you know, just look for something that's real. Look for something that's musically real, and try to find out, find out what is the what is the realness in it. What is the what's the spark? What makes you care? And maybe you can learn something from that. Mm -hmm. I find it, I find out all these elements popping up in my music all the time. And I think it's kind of fun and I kind of giggle at it when it does. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you're, when you get to the point where you, when you get the job, okay. So once again, you've had, you've had so many different, uh, a great variety of different projects. So mm -hmm. for instance, when you have, let's say a project uh, like first kill, for instance, okay. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you're giving the idea of the story. How are you developing the theme for that kind of story? And like, how do you find an, the essence of a project and know, how you want to develop the music for and it i assume the music you're making is specific for the project's not yeah. you know yeah uh i a lot of talking with the producers or directors or writers a lot of uh uh read i i insist upon reading the script even if the even if the pitch is already shot i like to read the script because i want to be on the journey as far as much as i can uh from the beginning with them mm. you know i want to take the journeys that they took Maybe we'll, and maybe we'll end up at the same place together, you know, mm -hmm. as much as I can. Uh, uh, I bombard them with tons and tons of, of, of questions uh, uh, about characters, about, about storylines, about feelings and emotions that are going on there, you know, and what, and what they are trying to get to, what they're, what they're trying to express at that moment. And if I come at it from that direction, I end up being a little bit closer to what, what they wanted to do, which is, which is the place to be, hmm. you know? So when, when, when you're, let's say, when you get on a difference between a TV show and a movie is that a movie is once again, one film, a TV show is multiple different episodes. So when you start on the project, let's say for instance, first kill, are, do you ask where the characters are going, where the show is going? Does that influence what you do and what yes. does, it does? Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, there are things that you need to know that, you know, that, that Pookie is actually, a, that, that's the small character here needs to have this thing because he's gonna be, he's, he's gonna be Luke Skywalker, basically. Mm. You didn't know that Luke Skywalker was ultimately this big character later, you know? Yeah. So there's been, sometimes I've started just little, little strains, a few notes of what becomes a big orchestral theme later, you know, uh, uh, in, in the case of uh, of the first kill, there were so there were so many. I don't think that anybody could have guessed how that was going to uh, how that first season was going to end. It was, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but I do say if you're out there and you and you've started watching it, and you say you watch three or four episodes and you think you know, I can tell you you have no freaking idea <laughs> you couldn't possibly it's uh it, it, it's very shocking and and so you will find out why i started building this theme earlier that you that becomes everything in the eighth uh, uh final episode uh season finale so uh you know yeah you're thinking those sorts of things all along and it's interesting how uh you know, some some producers will talk to you about where they're going uh, story arc over years. You know, mm. say you know that eventually, so and so is going to become blah de blah. I said, oh, yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and at the same time, you have to you can't jump ahead. You can't you you don't want to necessarily give that away. You got to live in the moment uh, mm. uh, of where they are today, where they are in the in the journey now you know uh in the black lightning we the the part of the of the, the, i i knew early on that that the daughters were going to become 
superheroes and that and which one was going to be coming up first is showing her powers and all of that and i started dropping little musical hints of what she what what would ultimately become her big uh uh hero theme which in the the last i think is the last or the next to last episode in uh season one uh becomes you know uh, becomes a huge anthemic sort of uh, 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 piece of music uh, in a battle with uh, her and uh, one of their main nemesis while her father was by, uh, uh, fighting Tobias well. And by this point now, this, this cute little piano uh, cue has become, is now turned into this big, which I knew it was always gonna be, this big anthemic, heavy metal rock sort of uh, thing that was going on there. And you're like, oh, shoot. And, and, you, and it take, took a few people a, a while to look back and say, oh my God, that was that same little thing that was, you know, yeah, that we were tinkering around with for several episodes for half the season almost. That's also, I mean, in, in the first kill on, your, on the soundtrack, you have a piece called Oliver. Um, is that kind of yeah. how you approach that one as well? Because once again, it's directed to a specific character. You're developed a theme for that particular character. And when you work on the other, when he appears in other scenes, are you working in that theme as well to carry over through across those? That is an interesting thing. Yes, and yes, they. Uh, uh, I know that there are going to be some interesting things that are going to happen with Oliver uh, uh, in coming seasons. So uh, uh, whenever that is announced, but uh, I. I needed to give him uh, a certain sort of darkness and a and a edge, and and we'll see where that that takes us. But it's a it's in a in it's it's in its much more simplistic form right mm -hmm. now, and uh, that's going to grow into something. Yes, you Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi has taught you well. <laughs> <laughs> so so when you're comp comp doing your composition for a particular um you know uh peace uh for uh for the like I said, for first go for instance how do you know when it's finished how do you know that it's exactly at the point where you needed to take it i go through this process and, and thank you for asking that uh, uh i i always tell uh uh my young assistants i'll say you know if you are if you are listening if you're if you are writing more than you're listening then you're doing it you, then something is wrong Something is going to get screwed up. I I spend a lot of time listening to the scores. I'm watching the picture, listening. I go into uh, different areas of the room and listening to it from over here. I listen to it at different volumes, different levels. I I go into other other rooms, like I was in the uh, in the kitchen or something, you know. Well, uh, but I was hearing this show in in the other room, and I want to see what it would sound like from there. I'm listening from all sorts of levels to give me perspective mm. and when i am no longer and, and and i come back after listening to that and i may make me add something or take something away and and when i finally can listen to it and i only feel like a fan nothing nothing is making me feel that urge to add something or take something away hmm. that I feel like it's and nothing is bumping me that I'm just now I'm not focused on the music I'm only focused on the scene and the characters and what they're saying what they what, what they're trying to emote and and it feels like one then I'm done hmm. uh, Except for if a producer or a director comes in and says, "That's crap. We got to change it all. We got to change it all." And then I'm not. And then mystically, I'm not done. <laughs> but so, I think if, if I do that right, I generally have less less notes like that. Now, when when you get feedback from a, a director or producer, or whatever, it, is it sometimes just tweak this or that, or is it sometimes um, you don't you may not realize what's going on with this character? You may want to consider this. Like, how does it usually yeah. come? Uh, uh, D, all the above. Uh, uh, I was in in uh, first kill recently. There was a there was a very heavily effects laden area 
uh, and what it looked like and what they had told me initially are not what it looked like when they got the full effects like several months later. And oh, we basically had to rewrite everything. Uh, it just did, it, it did not have the, the girth and the mm. intensity for what they had coming off the screen. Uh, uh, I have a tendency to get less notes but only because I am, I'm, I'm not writing the music for me, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm writing, I'm really, I, I don't take, I don't take their notes and what the things that they say uh, lightly. I try to uh, uh, try to make, uh, try to see how we can make sense of it you know, and, and see it through the eye of this composer mm. as opposed to that composer, you know? So I have to take it through the eyes of Kurt Farquhar, you know, and achieve what it is that they're saying, you know? Uh, and, and I genuinely see us as, as collaborators. I'm no, I don't, when a producer comes in, I'm not think, thinking, oh, this idiot doesn't understand. You know nothing of my work, even though I start <laughs> off, I tell them all that. <laughs> Even before you get started. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I also tell all, all of my producers I, I, and directors, I said, you know, you know that little, that, that thing where, you know, uh, an artist is just very uncomfortable about, you know, somebody talking about their work or, or whatever. Yeah, well, I don't have that. It fell out, <laughs> of, my, it, it fell out of me sometime in the 70s. So you might as well go straight for what you want to say as aggressively as you want to say it, you want to say specifically that that's crap and this is why this doesn't work, absolutely none of it for this thing. Go ahead and tell me that and we can get to what you want quicker. You know, mm. I just don't have, these are not my babies. I always <laughs> tell them my babies are at home and uh, at school in San Marino. At least I hope they were. And, <laughs> as, and uh, 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 this, you know, as much as I love it, I, I, you know, I'll do whatever you need, whatever it's going to take to make this, to make this scene real for you, to make it sing the way you want it to. So, so, so where can our listeners find your soundtrack and First Kill, the series? First Kill is on Netflix, Netflix and watch and binge it to the end. I'm telling <laughs> you, you're going to, you're not going to believe that, uh, that ending on that. And the soundtrack is out everywhere. You can uh, see it on uh, Spotify and uh, Apple Music and Amazon Music, and it's it's uh, virtually everywhere. And please, please, please check it out. It's a lot of fun. Download it, buy the music, you know, do it old school, you know, <laughs> and share it with your friends. It's a it's a lot of fun. It's a a, a, a wonderful piece. To, I, I I was telling everybody, I said this is my uh, uh, this is my uh, although it, it, this gets lost on some of the young ones. I said I said this is my dark side of the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that album. <laughs> <laughs> so you you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know I know dark side of the moon. It's fantastic. Yeah. Eclipse, perfect. <laughs> This is uh, yeah. This is uh, this is my dark side of the moon. It's it, it's it's an epic uh, journey. So please check it out. Well, thank you so much, sir. You were fantastic to talk to, and it was a great pleasure, sir. Oh, thank you for having me. I, this is I I really appreciate that you uh, that uh, you found me relevant to talk to, and I I'm uh, so proud to uh, be here and uh, chat with you about uh, something I love so much. Well, thank you so much, and you'll you'll hear back from me about the the. Okay, yeah, absolutely. All right, bye-bye.